Did you know that nearly 610,000 people die of heart disease every year in the U.S. alone? What's shocking is that some medications you take daily, prescribed for common issues like pain, infections, or even depression, could be silently increasing your risk of heart attacks, strokes, or heart failure. In this video, we're revealing 8 medications backed by scientific research that might be quietly sabotaging your heart health. Stick around, because knowing this could save your life or the life of someone you love. 1. NSAIDs NSAIDs are among the most commonly used medications worldwide for pain, inflammation, and fever. Millions rely on them for everything from arthritis to headaches. But what most people don't know is that these seemingly harmless pills can put your heart at serious risk, especially with long-term or high-dose use. A major 2017 study published in the BMJ found that taking NSAIDs, particularly ibuprofen and diclofenac, increased the risk of heart attack by as much as 50% within just the first week of use. Another study in circulation linked these drugs to higher rates of stroke and heart failure. NSAIDs can disrupt the balance of prostaglandins, compounds that help regulate blood flow and kidney function. This disruption can lead to fluid retention, elevated blood pressure, reduced kidney function, and an increased tendency for blood clot formation, all of which strain the heart and arteries. If you have high blood pressure, heart disease, or a history of stroke, you should be especially cautious. And always talk to your doctor before using NSAIDs regularly. There may be safer alternatives like acetaminophen or non-drug therapies depending on your condition. 2. Certain Antibiotics Antibiotics are lifesavers, literally. But did you know that some of them, especially the macrolide class like azithromycin, could silently pose a risk to your heart? A 2012 study published in the New England Journal of Medicine made headlines when it found that azithromycin, commonly prescribed for respiratory infections, increased the risk of cardiovascular death, especially in people with existing heart problems. In fact, within just five days of use, patients had a significantly higher rate of fatal arrhythmias compared to those taking amoxicillin or no antibiotics at all. The problem lies in how these antibiotics affect the electrical signals in your heart. They can prolong what's called the QD interval, a part of the heart's rhythm. When this interval is extended, it increases the risk of a dangerous condition known as torsades de points, a potentially fatal form of ventricular tachycardia. The risk is even higher if you're also taking other cutie prolonging drugs, have low potassium or magnesium levels, or an underlying heart condition. If your doctor prescribes a macrolide antibiotic, don't panic, but do ask if it's the safest option for your heart. Alternatives like doxycycline or amoxicillin may carry fewer cardiac risks, depending on your health profile. 3. Antidepressants, tricyclics and some SSRIs Antidepressants can be life-changing for people struggling with depression and anxiety. But certain types, especially tricyclic antidepressants, TCAs, and some selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, can pose hidden dangers to your heart, particularly for older adults or those with pre-existing heart conditions. A study published in the Archives of Internal Medicine revealed that tricyclic antidepressants significantly increase the risk of heart attack. Additionally, a 2011 FDA warning highlighted that citalopram, a widely used SSRI, can cause dose-dependent QD interval prolongation, increasing the risk of potentially deadly arrhythmias. How do they do this? TCAs affect multiple neurotransmitters but also interfere with sodium and potassium channels in the heart, which can lead to arrhythmias, changes in blood pressure, and slowed conduction between heartbeats. SSRIs like citalopram can also alter the electrical rhythm of the heart, especially at doses above 40 mg per day. If you're taking these medications, it's important to monitor heart rate, blood pressure, and undergo occasional ECGs especially if you're over 60, take other heart medications, or have a family history of heart problems. 4. Proton Pump Inhibitors, PPIs Proton Pump Inhibitors, or PPIs, are often prescribed, 
or bought over the counter for heartburn, acid reflux, and ulcers. While they're effective at reducing stomach acid, long term use may come at a hidden cost to your heart. A 2015 study published in PLOS One found that people taking PPIs had a 16 to 21% increased risk of heart attack, even if they had no prior history of heart disease. The risk was independent of other cardiovascular factors. How do PPIs harm the heart? Scientists believe these drugs may interfere with the body's ability to produce nitric oxide, a molecule essential for relaxing and dilating blood vessels. Reduced nitric oxide can lead to blood vessel stiffness, higher blood pressure, and impaired circulation, conditions that strain the heart over time. Additionally, long-term PPI use has been linked to magnesium deficiency, which can trigger abnormal heart rhythms and muscle cramps. They may also interfere with certain cardiovascular medications like clopidogrel, reducing their effectiveness. If you're taking PPIs regularly for more than a few weeks, especially without a clear medical need, talk to your doctor about tapering down or exploring safer alternatives like H2 blockers or dietary adjustments. 5. Diabetes Medications, Some Sulfonylureas Sulfonylureas are among the oldest and most widely used oral medications for type 2 diabetes. They work by stimulating the pancreas to release more insulin. While effective at lowering blood sugar, certain sulfonylureas may quietly put your heart at risk, especially in people with underlying cardiovascular disease. A study from the University of Chicago and published in JAMA Internal Medicine found that patients taking gliburide had a significantly higher risk of heart-related deaths compared to those on newer diabetes medications. Another analysis in the Lancet Diabetes and Endocrinology highlighted the increased risk of cardiovascular events and hypoglycemia-related complications with older sulfonylureas. Sulfonylureas block ATP-sensitive potassium channels, not just in the pancreas, but in the heart as well. This interference can reduce the heart's ability to respond to stress, such as during a heart attack. These drugs can also cause severe hypoglycemia which puts extra strain on the heart and increases the risk of arrhythmias and sudden cardiac events. If you have heart disease or are at high risk, ask your doctor whether a newer class of diabetes medication, like SGLT2 inhibitors or GLP-1 receptor agonists, might be a safer and more heart-friendly option. 6. ADHD Medications, Stimulants Stimulant medications for ADHD have transformed the lives of both children and adults by improving focus, attention, and impulse control. But behind their benefits lies a serious concern, potential harm to the heart, especially when used without proper monitoring. A study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, in 2011 found that stimulant use can lead to increases in heart rate and blood pressure. While the absolute risk of serious cardiovascular events was low in young adults, the risk increases significantly for people with undiagnosed heart problems, high blood pressure, or a family history of heart disease. These medications work by increasing levels of dopamine and norepinephrine in the brain, but they also stimulate the sympathetic nervous system, which can raise heart rate, constrict blood vessels, and elevate blood pressure. In some cases, this can lead to arrhythmias, palpitations, or even sudden cardiac arrest, especially when combined with physical exertion or other stimulants like caffeine. Before starting ADHD medication, it's important to have a full cardiovascular evaluation, including a blood pressure check and possibly an ECG. If you're already taking these medications, regular monitoring is key to keeping your heart safe. 7. Decongestants when you're stuffed up with a cold or seasonal allergies, reaching for an over-the-counter decongestant seems harmless. But if you're popping oral decongestants like pseudoephedrine or phenylephrine, your heart might be paying the price, especially if you have high blood pressure or he antihistamines for safer relief. Always check labels, many cold and flu meds contain hidden decongestants. 8. Chemotherapy Drugs Chemotherapy drugs save lives by attacking cancer cells, but some of them can have serious, long-lasting effects on the heart. 
this silent damage often goes unnoticed until symptoms appear months or even years later. According to studies published in Circulation and the Journal of Clinical Oncology, drugs like doxorubicin and trastuzumab are linked to cardiotoxicity, damage to the heart muscle that can lead to heart failure. Doxorubicin, an anthracycline, causes oxidative stress and damages heart cells, while trastuzumab interferes with signals essential for heart cell repair and survival. The risk depends on the dose, treatment duration, and individual factors like age and pre-existing heart disease. Symptoms might include shortness of breath, fatigue, swelling, or irregular heartbeat, but damage can develop silently before symptoms appear. Because of these risks, oncologists now routinely monitor heart function before, during, and after treatment using echocardiograms and biomarkers. Newer protocols aim to minimize cardiac harm by adjusting doses or using cardioprotective agents. If you or a loved one is undergoing chemotherapy, discuss heart monitoring plans with your healthcare team to catch problems early and protect your heart health. Thanks for watching. If you or someone you love is taking any of these medications, don't stop them without talking to your doctor, but do bring up any heart related concerns. Your health is a team effort, and awareness is your best defense. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss important health updates. Drop a comment below if you've had experiences with any of these medications, we'd love to hear your story and support each other. Stay informed, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.